Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Danielle, just in case you didn't know, now you do. And if you hear crunching in the background, that is my dog, who's chosen this exact moment when I started talking to start eating her food, her lunch specifically. Anyways, today we're taking a tour of my bookshelf. It's, um, in my opinion, not all that exciting, but maybe you'll find it interesting, who knows. I do have a variety of books. Most of them are non-fiction and sewing related or crochet related, fashion pattern making related. I don't keep a lot of um, novels because while I read between 120 and, a, and 200 books a year, um, I read them all on my Kindle or on my phone. And so I don't have a lot of like novels, but the ones I do have, I will share why they were special enough to make it to the shelf. Um, otherwise, let's get started. Okay, so this shelf gets a little more exciting. I have a collection of my old notebooks and planners and things like that. Um, there's some empty notebooks. There is a uppercase magazine. If you've never seen Uppercase before, this is what it looks like. I cannot get it any further away from the camera, sadly. Um, this magazine is um, features a lot of like artists and things like that. It is also um, Canadian, like it's a quarterly magazine, and we sell it at Happy Thoughts, but this one was all on stationery. It also has a feature from our local letterpress. Um, it's Everlovin' Press. Um, Vince is just like a great guy. We did a collaboration with him at the store. I also have a spare ring light here. There is, this is my um, folder full of all of my business receipts, and in here, what's this? Oh my gosh. This is my evolution of fashion um, lecture notes from when I was in fashion school. And this is essentially a giant workbook. See, filled it in. Then we have this um, note tote that was my grandmother's. It's full of, um, sewing patterns and um, sewing instructions that she cut out of magazines over the years. Um, my grandmother kind of grew up sort of right around the Great Depression, like when she was young, that's when it was happening. And so she lived with that very thrifty mentality um, and saved all of that kind of stuff. So thanks to her, I have a huge collection of things like that. In here is also um, 22's uh, bullet journal. This is Amanda Reach Lee one. Um, it should probably be over there with the other ones, but you know. This here is my prized possession. This is my um, pattern making textbook. I decanted it into a binder because the one that it came with was like cardboard. And um, this baby is like the bible of fashion design um let me just open it here it's very heavy all right so this is what it looks like on the inside i put all of these tabs in for easily being able to find stuff i just opened this up to the peter pa pan collar section it is so instructional in here i feel like I, this could be a video or two or like a series um maybe how to make blocks um yeah, something fun. Anyways, uh, that's what it looks like inside. This is very heavy and I'd like to set it down now. Then over here I have a photo book um, from Hairspray, the movie musical. Um, I really loved this movie and it was actually being shot in Toronto at the same time as I was living there. And I also saw the musical when it was in Toronto. This is the shelf that you are probably most familiar with um, because you can see it behind me in my videos. So I tried to make it a little decorative because I didn't have enough books to fill the shelf. However, um, yeah, I didn't, you know, know what else. 
to put there's a basket with some like wires and stuff I try to keep them out of sight and you can barely see them but you know um, I also have this planter here it was made by my friend Calvin um, it is a great like holder of things however it leaks as a planter sorry Calvin I never told you that I have a little like ceramic -y balloon dog because it's cute um, I also keep my scissors um, here um, here I don't even know how to there um, these scissors are the ones that were handed out to us in fashion school they're very expensive they're kind of rusty because I left them on a windowsill when the window was open and raining and I hate them because even after sharpening and all of that they don't cut well and they're very very heavy like imagine holding a pair of scissors that is solid metal and um just like is so heavy it hurts your hand after a while yeah these they're not great i do have more scissors for that um but i can't find them right now they're just like lost in the boxes of stuff that is in my room down here these are Uh, fashion sketching um, books, but they're curvy templates. So the idea is that you can draw right on top of here, or you can take a piece of tracing paper, hold it over top, and then be able to draw. In fashion school, I was only taught how to draw a very stick-like figure using the nine heads drawing method. I don't have those books anymore because they were, well, they were good, but they were not, I wasn't using them, so I got rid of them, right? Um, and the nine heads method is essentially to make um, the sketches you're doing look like these leggy tall models. And that's not what I'm drawing necessarily anymore, so I wanted to get better at drawing clothes for fat people essentially, so I got those. Tucked in here, we have my Guggenheim book. I got this when I went to the Guggenheim, but the only thing I could go to was the gift shop because I um, didn't check the hours and the museum was actually closed that day. So I got this, a few postcards, and a um, postcard mobile um, that is hanging on my wall right now with no postcards in it. So, um, But I keep it because I like how it looks when there are postcards in it so you know um so then we have a copy of being boss I, that one is signed i actually went and met both emily and kathleen in toronto one day um and got it signed um they were lovely humans and um it just so happened that they were passing through i think they were doing like a podcast or something i don't know this was a few years ago pre-pandemic kind of deal um but yeah, I have read that book many times. I have it on audiobook. Um, it is very good at like motivating you um, and also giving you the tools to build a balance between business and life because that is really what they're about. Then we have the pattern making primer. I haven't really read this one much, but what I have looked at it um, has seemed really good. And I've been told by many people who use it, who've never gone to like fashion school, this is really good. Then we have a couple of books on leather making. Um, I haven't really looked through these much, but they're good for like patterns and getting ideas of what you can make. Then we have metric pattern cutting. I haven't used this much, um, but I have heard that people actually use this for like their fashion school textbook instead of that big honkin' one I have. It tells you how to construct, um, this is for the classic coat block. Um, so it probably is very helpful and would be much easier to cart around with you than the giant binder that I have. So this here is dressmaking for real women. Um, basically as opposed to making things that is meant for people without curves and shapes and stuff like that I don't like the term for real woman any woman is a real woman um, but this helps you fit things a lot better that's why I have some flags in it up here folds in fashion is a fairly new one for me um, 
it is more about inspiration uh, and texture for me than actually doing anything. I like having books for um, that reason. Then we have the Crochet Every Way Stitch Dictionary. Um, I haven't really got into that one yet, but it's very helpful when you're building a project to have something like that so that you have reference and it shows you um, increases and decreases as well as just the regular stitch and like how to increase and decrease, which is very handy because not a lot of um, stitches show you that. Then we've got our Maker Life. This is knit and crochet patterns. Haven't looked in that one too much, but it's fairly new for me. Then we have this Leather Bags book. Um, I don't know why it's all dirty over here, but it is probably because I said something on top of it. Anyway, this is again about inspiration and there's patterns in this one, um, which is amazing because then you can use them as a starting off point. And then this one is the first of my Fashionary books. Fashionary is a company who like makes books for fashion designers. Um, this one's really tall, so I can't fit it all the way on, but um, it is, it has basically, oh my God. <laughs> it has like diagrams and breaks down um, all the components of uh, different bags. Uh, a lot of them are designers. You can see this is probably like a Chanel bag, but it helps you like, figure out how to make something, but like not the Chanel version, you know? Okay, one more shelf and my shoulders hurt. Okay, so I've got a couple little cuties on the shelf here. These are something I got as a Christmas gift. I dropped this one and his little foot fell off, but they light up and they're really just meant to look cute. Um, they came from Midori, I'm pretty sure and which is of course one of my favorite stores okay we're just gonna set these on a lower shelf and this guy is like a little mickey vinyl figure um i got it when i was in new york city it's supposed to look like one of those london like the beef eater um palace guards i got it from the disney store in new york city though let's start at this end of the bookshelf and we'll just whip through this as fast as we can so this is music is history this top shelf is all of my favorite books um or like the ones i want to see the most you know this is music is history by quest love i um bought this from happy thoughts but i also got the audiobook um and it's amazing he narrates it and it starts in the 70s if you're interested in music history and like little known music history this is a really good book and um in the audiobook he even plays like snippets of the tunes and stuff and has some like guest features then we've got another fashionary book this is textilepedia it's an encyclopedia of um different types of fabrics i do wish there were swatches like physical ones you could touch because that's a lot of how you determine what a fabric is, um, but it does, this is a start. Um, in fashion school, I had another um, uh, textile textbook that was full of swatches that we put down and there was three different ones. So there was the regular one, there was one we burnt and one we dipped in acetone. So you could see the different reactions and then we had to determine what type of fabric it was based on that. We even had like a ventilation hood and everything, it was awesome. Uh, every week we lit something on fire. Then we've got Fashionpedia, another fashionary um, book. This has like a physical label on it. Their books are so good and like, yeah, I honestly, I love the company and if they ever want to sponsor me, um, I will happily uh, do that sponsorship. Um, okay, so Fashionpedia, essentially an encyclopedia of all of the different like types of clothes there could possibly be. Um, yeah, just all the things. It's great. They have a new book out that is like fashion history um, and it's, I want to get it so bad. Anyway, next up, these two come together. So 
This is the box set. Um, this is the world of Lois Lowry. So it includes The Giver, Gathering Blue, and um, Messenger. And so this is what the box set. I've read all these books and they do, well, you wouldn't think it like they can be read alone. They do go together. Um, it goes The Giver first, Gathering Blue, then Messenger. And um, yeah, they, they just, they are so good. The Giver is basically my favorite book um, from when I was a kid. And that's why I have this copy of The Giver. Um, this is the one I had in grade six. Yeah, I think it was grade six when I read this. So um, yeah, I, it is, as you can see, well worn. It also is like nice and brown. There's some doodles in here. Uh, I think somewhere in here even, oh, on the cover. Yeah, it says Danielle McAllister, I heart Eric C. Uh, that was a kid who was not in my class, but was in the like the challenge program at my school. Like I beat this thing up. I loved it so much. Um, we weren't actually supposed to read it in grade six, but our teacher started reading it aloud to the class and then, um, got told it's actually part of our reading curriculum for grade seven. So she stopped mid book and I protested by buying this at the book fair and reading it anyway. And then in grade seven, I discovered like I, um, a spoiler alert, if you've read The Giver and think that um, he dies at the end, he doesn't die, okay? He's not dead. And if you tell me he's dead, you're wrong and you clearly haven't read Gathering Blue afterwards. We have Dress Code, Unlocking Fashion from the New Look to Millennial Pink by Veronique um, Highland. And I have not read this yet, but I think I'll get it as an audiobook because these types of books do not hold my interest unless it's an audiobook. I just wanted the physical copy too. Then we have Fatally Ever After, A Black Fat Girl's Guide to Living Life Unapologetically by Stephanie Yobala. This came out a couple years ago. I haven't, I started reading it, um, but I have not finished reading it. It's quite colorful on the inside and I love that. Um, but again, this is something I'll get as an audiobook too. And that way I can listen and read at the same time. And we've got my collector's edition of Red, White, and Royal Blue. You guys already know how I feel about this book. I love it. I have the collector's edition so I could get the final um, extra chapter. And I've read this book um, at least once. And I've seen the movie three times now. So, you know. I love it. This is a book I picked up at HomeScent. It's Fashion Evolution 250 Looks That Shaped Modern Fashion and it is like basically just an inspo book for me, you know, um, because this is like a lot of where designers get their inspiration from is from looking back at, oh, and there's money in here. This is where I keep the $1 and $2 bills that are out of circulation now. That my grandparents gave me. Don't tell anyone. Then we have the Fashion Business Mo a Manual by Fashionary. It's an illustrated guide to building a fashion brand um, and it really does break everything down like down to products. Oh, there is a bookmark in here like how to package, um, perfecting your sales techniques. Yeah. Uh, if you are completely new to like fashion business and, and or are trying to like get your fashion education without having to spend like 40 grand on a diploma, um, the fashionary books are a really good way to go. Then we have Plus Plus, I think is how you say it. Uh, this is... Um, basically a collection of photos and quotes from uh, plus size influencers, okay? Um, this is kind of old now. So this came out, I think in 2019. The forward is by Nicolette Mason and there is 
um, a whole, it's edited by Bethany Rudder, who's one of my favorite people on the internet. Um, she's just so nice. But uh, let me tell you, some of the people in here are just like, don't look the same. So like, it's really just about reading the quotes, not using the fashion as inspiration. So then we have how to fail successfully, finding your creative potential through mistakes and challenges. This one's pretty new for me. I got it at Happy Thoughts. Um, so I haven't read it yet. Um, again, this is another one that I'd probably get the audiobook for. This one is holographic. Uh, so I'm sorry ahead of time. It's the hidden facts of fashion. I'm going to open it. Um, oh Jesus, there's stuff on the other bookmarks all over the place. So like there is, um, different like history facts in here and that's great, but I cannot look at the cover. Um, because it makes me motion sick. We're almost done, three books left to go. This is the fashion book. Quite literally, this is probably the book I've owned the longest. I got it in fashion school. It was like a Christmas gift, I think. Anyways, uh, yeah, like it really is sort of like an encyclopedia of designers and inspiration and all of that up to like the mid 2000s. Then we have Tom Daly's Knit and Crochet books, our book, it's called Made with Love. Honestly, this book is just pretty to look at, but I do wanna make some things out of here. It just, you know, looks so fun. Tom Daly is the British swimmer and di or the diver um, who, kind of got noticed at the Olympics because he was watching his teammates and crocheting at the same time in the stadium, which is just bananas. But uh, I love that that's what he was doing. So yeah. Last but not least, Modern Crocheted Afghans, Throws, and Pillows. It's just a book of crocheting blankets. That's all. Um, <laughs> just literally for the inspo. So I do have like a couple other books around, but I'm not going to get them. All right, so that is everything that is on my bookshelf. Um, as you can see, I have lots of room to add more books, uh, but I don't buy a lot of physical books unless they're instructional. Um, and yeah, so that's, you know, that's how I save space, I guess. I don't like, having to dust them and a while ago I did get rid of a ton of books like a couple years ago um that I just wasn't using a lot of fashion books that I didn't need anymore those are my books if you have any questions uh let me know I will not be leaving links to everything because um I'm not gonna lie that's a lot of books to go and find the links to um so if you want to uh if you want to look them up feel free to pause the video and hop over to wherever you buy books and um, buy them. I don't need the affiliate income, believe me. Uh, we'd be there forever. But, you know, fashionary, if you want to sponsor a video, I would happily um, work with you on that. So anyway, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for watching this video. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Thanks so much and have a great day. Bye!